Hey everyone, this is John Bolton. I am a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And today I'm going to be discussing satellite-based remote sensing of soil moisture and particularly how that can complement and leverage in situ-based observation of soil moisture that we are we will be discussing today during the listening sessions. So first I'd like to point out that this figure here, this is the Soil Moisture Active Passive mission or SMAP. This is NASA's latest and greatest achievement focused on satellite-based observations of soil moisture. This was launched in 2015. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in a second. So NASA actually has quite a large number of Earth observing satellites in our Earth fleet as shown here. We have over 18 different satellites that are focused on different components of the water, energy, and carbon cycles. So traditionally we use radiation-based remote sensing technologies to sense different components of the Earth system. So we see here highlighted on this, this cartoon of the electromagnetic spectrum, we have soil moisture, snow, ice, rainfall, and vegetation. And the region identified as, as microwaves, these, this is the, the region of the electromagnetic spectrum that is sensitive to soil moisture. And in the next figure, I'll show you how that is done. So in soil moisture remote sensing, there's two two main approaches for doing this. You have a passive approach and an active approach. Passive approach you can think of as your, your eyes capturing ambient light. So you can see uh, active is similar to a radar gun. So it emits radiation and, and measures the backscatter or return. So the the passive instrument, in fact, it's, it's a microwave radiometer is, it's, is measuring the thermal emission from the land surface. And this is measured in the brightness temperature. The soil moisture, in fact, is the dominant effect on that received signal in the absence of significant vegetation. On the other hand, the, the active component or backscatter or radar is, is you have the ability of having a finer spatial resolution. And it's also sensitive to soil moisture. However, it's, it's influenced more by vegetation and surface roughness. So the goal here is to try to combine these two technologies optimally so you can, you can leverage the, the capabilities of both. Now the value of remote sensing based approaches is realized mostly in the fact that you have the capability of having a global perspective combined with frequent revisit times. Now these satellites are, are flying at several hundred kilometers altitude and they're going quite fast. So you have the potential for frequent revisit times and you have a regional perspective of soil moisture now, what you can do with this, you can, it provides an improved understanding of the hydrologic cycle. You can link the processes of the terrestrial water, energy, and carbon cycles, many different applications. But the key here is to have a long-term consistent data record at the highest possible temporal and spatial resolution so that you can strategically merge these with in situ observation networks. Now, satellite-based remote sensing is not going to replace in situ, and in situ is not going to replace satellite remote sensing. You have limitations with remote sensing-based approaches. You're limited by your penetration or sensing depth, as well as you, your revisit time is, is the highest is perhaps probably daily revisit time. Yet, you have this, this spatial resolution and regional perspective combined with a global view of soil moisture, and this provides a lot of value um, when you're when you're applying these. It's interesting to look at the evolution of satellite-based soil moisture remote sensing. Here on the left, we see the SIMR satellites were first launched before 1980, and as technology has advanced, mostly our ability to capture longer white microwave wavelengths, so as the fidelity and, and uh, reliability of the remote sensing based soil moisture products. Most notably, the NASA Soil Moisture Active Passive mission was launched in June 2015. So as I just mentioned, NASA has a long legacy of microwave radar and radiometer instrument and algorithm design. On the top right figure here, you see a truck mounted instrument. So these were done as a test bed for future satellite based sensors. And the, the next figure down, this is a sort of a demonstration of a strategic blending of agronomic information and satellite data and models. So taking these, these satellite-based observations, 
merging them with in situ observations. So this can be done for calibrating and validating current and even planned satellite products for increasing the fidelity of the, the, the in situ network as well as the satellite based products. And this leads me to value added products. So the key here is, is trying to strategically apply these, merge these with a land surface model or a crop growth model or a soil moisture model so that you, you can improve and constrain those models from, from uh, frequent satellite observations. And from that, you're able to have more informed information, such as the Dynamic Agriculture and Productivity Index, or DAPI. That's a partnership with the National Agricultural Statistical Service and the Foreign Agricultural Service, as well as USDA's Crop Condition and Soil Moisture Analytics, or Crop CASMA product. Now let's take a look at what SMAP is seeing. So the, the objective of the SMAP mission it was to provide high resolution and frequent revisit global mappings of soil moisture and landscape freeze thaw state. The mission target for accuracy was 4% soil moisture and a sensing depth of 0 to 5 centimeters. Now the repeat time of the SMAP sensor is three days. So you have a three day global coverage capability. And what this animation here is showing is, is precipitation memory. It's simply just the NASA GPM or global precipitation mission observations of precip overlaid with the soil moisture active passive anomalies. And it's pretty cool and it really captures this idea of precipitation memory. So NASA is also partnering with the Indian Space Agency for an exciting mission uh, planned for launch in 2023. This is the NISAR soil moisture mission. And what's exciting about this, it will have a, a much higher resolution of 200 meters, but it'll have a uh, more infrequent global coverage of every 12 days. That said, we're very excited for this, this next horizon of satellite-based remote sensing. Now, as I mentioned before, the you know the value of, of ground-based measurements is that is the the high accuracy that you have. However, they suffer from sparse and, and limited coverage. Now, the, the key here is to combine these with a satellite-based observation. You can do this through combining with a land surface model through data assimilation. In fact, that's what we are showing right here. This is the NASA USDA Global Soil Moisture Data Assimilation System, and by doing this, you're able to to constrain this, this in this case, it's a two-layer soil moisture model. So you have a value-added product uh, that is also providing global coverage, and it leverages both in situ observations and satellite-based observations. So I hope this provided some context of satellite-based remote sensing and, and how it's related to and tied and depends really on on in situ gauge observations of soil moisture. So there's many interesting applications of soil moisture that, that are coming about these days, whether it's constraining hydrologic weather models or, or informing agricultural monitoring or improving flood or drought forecasting. Right here, this is a pretty cool example of assessing fire risk through satellite-based observations. And it's pretty simple and very straightforward. On the top left, you see um, um, the time series of observed fire counts from satellite. And on the bottom, you see just a, a time series of lag correlation of soil moisture anomaly. Uh, pretty straightforward, but also a, a wonderful demonstration of the value of soil moisture. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to these listening sessions.